thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, purely simply, this is for us giving back to the community, giving back to everyone who has attended our webinars and thanking everyone for really joining in the cause that, um, that we, we've been sharing along the last few weeks. And um, <clears throat> yeah, just wanna, all of us as a team here, we just wanna get together and uh, I give you some tools to combat the fear of what's going through right now. The whole community, the whole society is based on fear. So what we wanna do is with our presentation and what we know, and the tools that we know and we use ourselves, we'd love to share with everyone here. So um, it's a free, as you know, those who've registered and you're listening to it now, um, it's a free webinar. And again, this is our, our um, giving back to everyone who's really supported us for what we've been doing. Yeah, Over to you, Steve. All right, thanks, Grace. And welcome everyone. And Diane, to answer your question, I'm pretty much all over the country, and I don't know if we've got anyone from the US or Canada who, who often join us, but um, yeah, pretty much every state's represented uh, usually when we do these webinars. So let's, um, let's kick off with a bit of housekeeping, just a, a quick run sheet and overview, just so everyone knows um, you know, what's happening coming up. So each speaker will go for approximately 50 minutes, give or take. Um, there'll be a one to two minute changeover. And again, fingers crossed any techie gl glitches, which can sometimes happen, but one to two minute changeover at most. Uh, Warren and I will speak at first, we'll speak first rather. Warren is um, talking about manifestation secrets, how to shift energy in the quantum to rediscover your center fast. Then I'm talking about emotional freedom via shadow work. We will then have a short refreshment slash toilet break around um, 10.20, again, give or take. Um, and then Grace and William will come on. Grace will be speaking about new year, new beginnings, and um, William will um, talk about DNA activation and ascension. And so that certainly is um, a, a session not to be missed. I mean, they're all not to be missed, obviously, but um, I'm a little bit biased in saying that stuff. But Will's session this afternoon, uh, Perth time, will be fantastic. And then we have a short close. We'll give the information about the donation um, for Sammy and so forth. Um, and it's a warm welcome. So, Grace, any, any other quick housekeeping things I might have forgot before we kick off? Oh, just to really, um, if we can be really present and to um, take all our attentions out, our mobiles, obviously, um, anything that distracts, um, yep. just remove them and uh, get rid of all of those things. And if we can have your full attention, that would be marvellous. And um, and also, if you've got any questions, just free to put on the chat or the Q&A. Um, one of us will respond to you. Yeah. And um, like we've got on the screen there, this is about <clears throat> you and it's about going within so that you can actually change your outer world. So um, it's an important, I really do believe it's an important session um, today for everyone. Um, mm. You know, just, just given, I think that the pace of change and puts people off their centre as well. So it's a, such a timely um, and important message for everyone today. So uh, well done on you for being here. Um, Grace, did you want to have a quick talk about this or do you want me to? Take that which resonates, leave everything else behind. Um, uh, because like when, we are, when I do sessions with clients, one-on-one um, <clears throat> -on -one or group sessions, it's always important that, you know, to let everyone know that all of us have got our own tools. We've all, we've all received our knowledge. We've got our wisdom ourselves. And um, we're here to really follow our own path, our own journey. So what myself or Steve or William or Warren, anyone who's speaking really, at the end of the day, it's their experience, what they've gone through and what has worked for them. So... This is a great way to say, guys, you know, take what resonates for you, whether it's Steve or myself, what, what we share, um, take whatever it, that really resonates and really beats in your heart and run with it. And we're not here to tell you um, what to do or give you advice or anything like that, because mm -hmm. we all, right, right, Steve, we, we have some form of, we know what we need to do. We know what we want. And all we need is a confirmation. So we're really simply conf confirming with you <clears throat> what's within and, um, and everything else, put it aside um, and also just chew on it. So that's what we invite you to do. 
because again, as, as Steve said earlier, that this is all about you today. And um, we've prepared this time to hopefully to assist you in, in some form to, you know, to get over this um, fear-based um, what's happening around the world right now. Yeah. And, ev- you know, everyone's a sovereign in, sovereign being, sovereign individual. And so you, you always have that um, ability to, to leave stuff behind that doesn't resonate with you. And so there, there might be some stuff, you know, today, and, and that's great. That helps you, you know, one of the powers of a sovereign being, I think, is the power of discernment. So, um, yes. you know, and we must all appreciate that for all, for ourselves. And so, um, let, look, let's dive in. Um, I just wanted to share... Um, this with everyone at the start. Um, Brad Cusworth, who is, is very much into the crypto space, and he spoke with Global Wealth Club maybe two or three weeks ago, and he posted this on Facebook, and I've reproduced it here um, with his permission. Um, and I just, to me, it just really was a really good lead in, a really good segue to, to what we're talking about today. So I'll just read it through for you. He said, he wrote, what if COVID is an incredible gift for humanity, a pressure cooker situation gifted from the higher realms to help us snap out of this deeply comatose state, an opportunity to slow down, listen and go within. Humanity was heading down a path of total self-destruction, too busy watching Netflix, scrolling phones and drinking beers on a Friday night to notice the path that we had chosen completely oblivious to what has been happening in the world, heads buried deeply in the sand, plugged into the matrix and unplugged from source, consuming, consuming, consuming with no awareness for the long-term consequences, disconnected from nature and disconnected from the earth. We had lost our way and totally forgotten who we are. COVID has given us an opportunity to face off with the shadows of humanity and also face off with the shadows within ourselves. Many are clinging on to this old reality that is crumbling right before us. The pain will continue to intensify for those who are not willing to open their eyes. And he goes on, um, there is no escaping the inner work. It is time to let go of the old so we can create space for the new. This is, a, this is time to release anything that is no longer serving us. Take a leap of faith and surrender to the unknown. Start focusing our attention on solutions and step into more leadership. Take personal responsibility for how we all co-created this reality with our actions and inactions. It is time to remember who we are and reconnect with our source. Ground our feet on the earth and feel how held and supported we are. Call in our ancestors and spirit guides. They are here to help us during this incredible awakening process. Stare in, into a fire at night and dream a new reality. We are powerful beyond measure. This is the great awakening. Um, and oh, I, just, I just love that when I read that. Um, mm. It really just... It really just focused my myself and my being into you know where we are right now as humanity and as individuals and um, it made me reflect on how easily I'm thrown off my center and how much I had been trapped in those things um, Grace did that any comment there from you uh, well again you know as you know I'm a student of Dr John D Martini and um, what I'm going through in my um, message later on is that you know is the quality of your questions um shows the quality of your life and how you fulfilled you are so that question that brad, brad asked what if covid was an incredible gift for humanity mm. so to me that's a fan it's an incredible question because it really opens up so much um you know rather than being a victim and rather than being caught up in the circumstances in the whole you know the whole masses of what they're going through it really r- makes you reflect reflect within well what if COVID was an incredible incredible gift you know what what is it so it's it gives you another option doesn't it Steve gives you another option of purpose in life rather than giving up there is is, there's actually hope um when there's darkness there is always light when there's Mm. uh, night you it's guaranteed morning will come and so asking these questions is actually pertinent and um again it's an open-ended question and it really allows you to open everything, your mind, your heart, soul, everything about you. Yeah, and it's, it's a lovely phrase, Grace, even the darkest night ends. Yes. You know? Yeah, wonderful. All right, the other thing that just, uh, again, gives some perspective and context to everything, uh, Jasmine posted this, many of you know Jasmine from Global Wealth Club. Um, she posted this, I think, during the week. Um, thank you for that, um, Jazz. Um, it's a, a quote from 2 Timothy um, one to one and seven and it goes for god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind 
And I really, I really resonated with that because it's kind of like, for me, it's as humanity and, and even individually in these times, it's kind of like that's all we cling to is the fear and we've forgotten the power of love and the power of a sound mind and, and, and we've, we've surrendered to the fear. And, and so that really was a recentering, a refocusing um, piece of scripture for me because fear is not our natural state. Um, really hard with all the circumstances going on. I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's easy at all, but fear is not our natural state. And for us to be able to get centered and get out of fear, um, you know, especially these times is, is a really wonderful thing. Um, all right, Grace, any, before we, we dive into the heart-mind coherence, any last final comments? Well, my only comment right now is just to relax and to, you know, be at ease, take comfort um, in the words that we're about to share. And again, you know, question everything and just chew on all the things that we, um, we share too, because you're not, you, you, we're here to teach you to be a sovereign individual. And so that means, you know, test everything that we say too. And, um, and again, put all the distractions away and just focus today and just really be connected with us and connect with everyone else, the, all, everyone has, who has participated and joined us today. And um, if you can tune in, in energetically, that would be wonderful. All right, fantastic. Let's start um, so we can go within uh, with a quick heart brain coherence. And if you haven't done this before or are not aware of it, I'll just, I'll give you like a one minute summary. Um, research by the Heart Math Institute in the US, it found that the heart has 40,000 cells or brain-like cells called sensory neurites. So it's kind of like we've got a little brain in the heart and a big brain in the head. Um, and the sensory neurites they found can, can think independently of the, the neurons in the brain. They can remember independently. They can communicate independently from the neurons in the brain. And the, the trouble with our, or the, the challenge with the human existence is that we've been so conditioned to see the world always through the brain and, and it works independently from the heart. And, and when we do that, we have this kind of disconnect um, with our being. We're, we're kind of like we're separate. And scientists, the research found that when we harmonize the two of them, it's like we're, we're, we're more complete, if I can put it that way. It, it gives us the powers of empathy and compassion and um, intuition and, and a whole lot of those things. And so the purpose of harmonizing the little brain, the heart with the big brain in the head is to create a hotline to our subconscious. And it's, it's this hotline is where the healing for all of us begins. And scientists found that it can last, uh, the benefits can last for up to six hours. So... Um, it also deepens the impact of affirmations and, and things like that. So there's a, a three-step process. Um, I'll take you through that now. And um, look, this is it's not necessarily anything new. It's been um, used extensively by the likes of Greg Braden and Brian Scott, um, Joe Dispenza, and, and all of those really great teachers around the world. So I'd, I'd invite you to, to work with me through this for the next couple of minutes as we go through those three steps. So firstly, I just invite you uh, to close your eyes and, and to shift awareness from your thinking mind into your feeling heart. And so I just invite you to gently touch your heart center with an open palm or, or two palms like I'm doing with, with, it can be with fingers or one finger in whatever way is comfortable for you. And so why we do this is our awareness always goes to the place on the body where we feel the touch. And this draws our awareness from our thinking, busy, urgent, survival oriented mind into our, our feeling heart. And it, it gives the, sends the body a signal that I'm turning my attention inward. So just, just close your eyes and, and, and gently touch your heart space. That's step number one. And step number two is to slow your breathing. So I invite you to breathe in through the nose for a count of five, to hold for a count of five, and then out through the mouth for a count of five. And we'll do that three times. Hold for five. And then out through the mouth for five. And again, in through the mouth, nose for five. Hold. And out through the mouth. And again, in through the nose for a count of five. Hold. And out through the mouth for five. When we do this, it, it tells the body that we're in a safe place because 
the only time that we ever breathe like this is, is when we feel safe. So it's a signal for the body to let go of all the stress hormones, feelings of stress, and it, it awakens the healing chemistry within the body because really we can only do one of two things. We can be in survival mode or in healing mode. And this gives the body permission to awaken that healing mode. And so once again, breathe in for a count of five from that place you feel the touch. Hold for five. And out through the mouth for five. And again, in through the nose for five. Hold. Out through the mouth for five. And that's step number two. And then step number three is to create a feeling. And we're the only species on the planet that can do this. So I invite you to create a feeling in your heart space from that place you feel the touch, the place where you're just breathing from to the best of your ability to feel one or a combination of care for anyone or anything, appreciation for anyone or anything, gratitude and compassion. These four words scientists found, they trigger that connection between our brain and our heart. Um, so to the best of your ability to feel one or a combination of care, appreciation, gratitude, compassion, from that place you feel the touch and just to sit with that feeling for a few moments. I invite you to breathe in, take one more slow deep breath. Hold for five. Then out through the mouth for five. And with our hearts and our minds in a coherent state, um, I now hand over to Warren for Manifestation Secrets, how to shift the energy in the quantum to rediscover your centre fast. Grace, have you got anything else before we hand back to Warren? No, I Honestly, that always works for me, Steve. Um, you only need to take a couple of minutes time out um, of your day to just purely do that. And it really brings you back to that state of lightness in your mind and, um, and you know, come back to centeredness. Yep. All right, Warren, over to you. You have, you have the, the driving seat now um, and so forth. Okay, hi everyone. And thank you, Steve, and thank you, Grace. So welcome. And yes, I have to say, I loved that Brad Cusworth quote when I read that. I thought that is so good. In fact, I was just reading this book this morning it's called The Secrets of Lemuria in Atlantis. And I've just found this book in a bookstore the other day. And I was reading it in complete fascination. And it was just this morning as I happened to be reading it, it was saying very similar things. So the power of synchronicity, as you can see, the, what it was basically saying was that the reason Atlantis and Lemur collapsed was because of exactly that. The society turned away from the spiritual walk and it, and it was saying that how the societies basically were very spiritual, very centered, very much in their heart, very much around the ocean. And what happened was as time went on, they got caught up with the what they call the sins of the sun to Belial, where it says they started to actually get caught up in in everything to do with material stuff especially technology phones computers everything like that they started making that they started making their technology their god and bit by bit they started going more into debauchery immorality financial corruption swindling each other they became angrier more violent and what it explained was that when all those thoughts build up and up and up the thoughts start actually spreading up and creating a an effect and eventually um, a meteor hit hit the earth and um in 10,000 BC and there was a whole, you know, and Atlantis was destroyed in fire and water. It's basically tidal waves came swarming upon the place and Mother and Earth just hit back. And there's no doubt we were heading to the same path of real danger. And COVID to me has been a real gift to actually help stop the madness and insanity of society. And I think this whole jab mandate, I see it the same way. It's an absolute hit to people's um to stop the insanity of our lives we're so addicted to our work to our money 
to our daily lives and get back to the truth and what's most important our health our life our spiritual walk or our or our you know or our money in our careers and you know it's a real it's a great gift and so today i'll be sharing about this how to shift energy into quantum to rediscover your center fast that you'll just walk out of here you know four hours later hopefully a much different person and seeing the world in a much different way so please just, yep, get rid of all distractions and just um, ask any questions, you know, which I'll answer at the end. The idea today is we're doing around 50 to 55 minute presentations, four different speakers, kind of to, like a four course meal. So one of my favorite little ones, um, have I gone mad? I'm afraid so. You're entirely bonkers, Alice said to the Mad Hatter, but I'll tell you a secret, all the best people are. So I get really pleased when people see me as a nutcase and a bit of a nut job and a conspiracy theorist. They can call me what they like. So government is so busy creating fear in people and actually getting people worked up. And it just works so well because, and obviously I've got a reason for doing it. They, Agenda 21, I'm sure many of you have heard, the New World Order, getting people worked up, getting them afraid, getting people to come running for security. Um, there was a book written years ago I was shown when I was in our little underground movement, The Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion, a leaked document which was written um, to actually show the whole New World Order plan and the plan to take over the world, which happened to leak. Quite an interesting book. Um, it was a protocol written about 130, 140 years ago, and when you read it, you're like, whoa, they've done a pretty damn good job in succeeding. Um, and this has been the main group that's been behind it which I've mentioned in some of our previous seminars, the Khazarians. If you haven't heard of them before, well, it's because they were deleted from the history book in 1913 when the Encyclopedia Britannica was bought. So um, all these coercion mandates um, for forcing, forcing someone to do something um, against their will by clever economic persuasion, um, moving fast towards the collapse of many small businesses, Keep in mind, again, when you see it from the COVID being a gift perspective, many small business owners are living day-to-day, hand-to-mouth, barely surviving, working 80-hour weeks, and all honesty would be better off just going and getting normal jobs, cutting half the time and spending time with their family. But, you know, many small businesses today are literally living with taxes, with government regulation and compliance, with expectation. And there was a survey I remember being done, especially of men, and a study, it was a very good book by Rollo Tomasi, who writes The Rational Male, and Alan Roger Curry, who writes Mode One, and The Beta Male Revolution. And what they both say is how, and Robert Kiyosaki also in one of his books, um, I think it's Cash Flow Quadrant or another one, all three of his authors just talk about this thing about how men especially live in this rat race, this need to feel they've got to provide for their families, to... You know, many men are doing jobs or businesses they just don't want to be doing, but to keep paying bills for a wife they're not sure if they want anymore, and for kids who, who are generally not particularly grateful, and even if they are, they don't feel that they're living for themselves. So many, many men especially um, are getting a gift from this whole thing, as well as many women who really are just doing jobs they don't want to be doing. So when you hear about manifestation today, you will see how much we are creating our reality on a daily basis. You know, Centrelink payment, there are many people relying on that who I see will be forced off Centrelink in the next 12 months as governments say, unless you jab, you'll get it. And again, when you see from a manifestation perspective, all of these are really just what I call carrot up our asses to get everyone moving, to live your inner center and live your inner truth. For me, I've been, I've made so many changes the last two years that have been so positive for my life. But the last 12 months, I sometimes feel a bit bad to say it to people when they talk about how difficult this year's been, I said, apart from what happened with my partner seven weeks ago, that was a curveball. Until then, it had been a magnificent year. And even then, that's turned out to be a gift in its own way as I'm going through my own kind of change and evolution in myself. You know, vaccinations, microchipping eventually is what they're talking about. And there's no doubt in my mind we're heading into these times, you know, because people are so fighting to hold on to the old way of life. And, find, and, and hold on to the old way of being, but many will completely give up their soul and their body to the beast or to the transhumanism system to maintain their way of life. And really what I see COVID and the market beast as it's a call to move into a new way of life and a new way of being. 
a new spiritual higher way of being get back to the very thing that atlantis and lemuria were once doing that made them such great civilizations they were wonderful civilizations they were spiritual they were very um sensitive they were very psychic they're very prosperous they were moved in quantum energy quite heavily and really what's happening now is this is giving us another chance which atlantis and lemuria never had they just got destroyed by fire water and angering the gods we got an opportunity to not do that so i see that this time around it's almost like the the councils those who oversee our universe see every single opportunity they want to give humanity to break out of our coma and this time around not make the same mistake as we've done that of course collapses time and time again of great civilizations so your response today and how you see everything and how you react will determine your destiny you can be one of the ones running around waving flags and yelling about how you're losing your rights and bawling your eyes out and then as what i've seen in perth where a month ago there was 50,000 at the protest now there's a lot less once you got all the emotion out of your system the grief hits or you can be one of these proactive people who just say right this is a gift i'm going to get back to my truth i'm going to get back to my way of being and who i really am but god has not given us a spirit of fear you know but of love of power love and a sound mind i love that scripture um you know i love that scripture there's another one too in psalm 30 which says you know i will extol you O lord for you have lifted me up and not let my enemy rejoice over me god you know you heard my cry and you healed me and brought me up from the pit that's another one of my favorite scriptures where it just is called to say i will not give a, i will not give into the spirit of fear and there's another psalm which we often read in our spiritual warfare and prayer meetings which talks about um psalm 27 for it says you know for, for god is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the stronghold and the strength of my life of whom will i be afraid when the wicked and the evil ones come to attack me they stumble and fall though an army may encamp against me my heart will never fear though war breaks out against my soul i remain confident and that's the spirit we've got to have in these days ahead and the thing is we can transform the energy and as einstein said um everything is energy and it's all that matters so as soon as you shift the energy it changes your life raymond grace of course one of my all-time favorites who many of you've heard and steve Plummer often talks about raymondisms he says you are who you think you are he says most people spend all their time thinking about what they don't want and then and then manifest exactly what they didn't want to have because they think about it all the time and it's so true I get sometimes a little bit frustrated because I hear everyone running around talking about this and this is going to happen and this is going to happen. And I'm like, well, you're certainly making sure it happens with the manifestation that your vibes that you're putting out there. So most people focus on what they don't want and then, of course, cry when they get what they didn't want, but they just created what they didn't want anyway by their thinking. I mean, a weird little paradox, isn't it? And science knows this. The yogis know this. Scientists will tell you that energy matches energy um apples apple trees don't suddenly turn into oranges you get who you think you know we're manifesting every minute and every hour of the day by our thoughts and our choices and what we're vibrating and putting out there and in the atlantean book of course they talked about that and how the atlanteans were putting out so much violence and hate anger and fear but it actually was increasing the rage vibration and eventually caused volcanic eruptions i mean philippines has had this horrible typhoon it's just wiped out a whole lot of it and you can just see that kind of stuff mother nature starts hitting back um your life is like a movie screen which is directed from your thoughts and great teachers like neville goddard to joseph murphy um dr john sano a medical doctor um charles hannell um there's so many i could list you in the bible jesus basically says um something similar he says that if you basically believe something and you have no doubt in your heart that what you say will come to pass then he says you're going to basically have the very thing that you say so you know if you actually believe the very thing and you actually put your trust and you know have no doubt whatsoever that that very thing will come to pass you will actually have the very very thing that you say so you know it's quite it's very very powerful so manifestation amazing love it to bits I'm just having a technical problem at the moment. Just give me a sec.
my screen just jammed on my PowerPoint. So I just have to wait until this opens up again. But in, while I'm waiting for it to open up, yeah, um, basically what we've got is, um, hang on, it's open up again, good. Okay, hang on, that's still playing up, just give me a sec. Yep, okay, no, not having much luck here. Um, okay, let me try this again. Okay, yep, I've got it now. Just give me a sec. Okay, perfect. So back to normal. Okay, so your mouth speaks, your body listens, and it takes action. So your last 1,000 thoughts and choices are summing up your present life. This was what a great mentor taught me years ago. So he said, if you actually go back and look over all your thoughts over the last few days, they will tell you what you're manifesting. Now, I remember when I learned all this kind of stuff and I had a really great mentor. He kicked my ass on this stuff. And whenever, and I remember sitting there one time in Vegas and I'd been getting off really pain in my body for two months. And I said to him, look, I said, um, I was in a room with 10 other people. I said, I've been getting arthritic really pain in my body. How do I heal this issue? He kind of looked at me and he grinned. He said, this issue? He goes, there's your answer. And he winked at me and he kept speaking. And I said, well, hang on a sec. I was, and then he stopped speaking and looked back at me. And I said, okay. So I said, what you're saying is I'm manifesting. And he goes, uh, it sounds to me that's all you're thinking about right now. And I thought, yikes. And that was when I started to change. So... <laughs> Whatever you've been thinking about over the last few days, you'll be manifesting it. Um, I was talking to my boys yesterday, and I mean, the mandates have just not affected me. And in fact, at all, but that's because I'm not charged by them. And I'm really hardly think about them. It'd be rarely in my mind, unless people bring it up with me. And your last 1,000 thoughts and choices sum up your present life, and you are the living reality of it. So you have to ask yourself, what are you telling yourself? Are you telling yourself, oh, there's no way to escape this. I heard someone say, well, never to be, I'm going to get jabbed. I'm just holding off as long as I can. I'm like, well, there you go. You're manifesting it. I've heard other people say to me, you know, well, this will happen and eventually this will happen. You know, like, and really it comes back to this. Like, what did your parents teach you about the government money in society? What do you believe about government? I, I always have these interesting debates. I even have people saying to me now, I'm having people accusing me of, believing the government's narrative and being ignorant just because I simply say when people get worked up I'm like well the politicians are aren't necessarily these complete evil people they're just doing their job and um because as I see it yeah I mean they are just manifesting the will of the people and the energetic conscious collection and that's what I I don't have any charges towards the politicians someone said what would you do if you met Daniel Andrews or I said, I'll probably have a, have, a, have, a, have a wine with him and I'd be curious as to why he's doing what he's doing. You know, what, what restrictions do you impose upon yourself? What do you believe about money? Most people believe it's hard. They've got to work their asses off to get money. Like, oh God, I need my job to get money in. Well, I've been in Vegas at a Baccarat table watching people just walk in there, make a few things and walk away with a whole heap of money. You know, I had a, one, a, a close friend of mine just cashed out you know, put in, invested a hundred grand in cryptos over the last few years and just cashed out a million and bought a house. You know, she attracted that money with ease. What is your present reality? If your family, yourself, your health. Um, as Neville Goddard says, the world is yourself pushed out. And I love that. Think about those words. You know, the world is yourself pushed out. So whatever you're seeing in the world is you. And if you don't believe me, then this is one science that you will have to either choose to accept or reject. But Einstein science and quantum science basically says very clearly that, that every atom in every cell of our being carries a whole universe in its energy vibration, which basically means that we are a conscious living God creator manifestation, you know, hologram. And everything that's happening in our life, we are absolutely living. 
I was doing some manifestation work on Wednesday because manifestation is a conscious process. It's not, if you just basically randomly go along and let, let what life takes you, your random negative mass consciousness thoughts that are coming in from the collective vibration that's full of fear, anger, hate, and rage and negativity right now, that will start to like consume your, your energetic field and seep in and you'll manifest that. We did a whole big thing where we cleared all the effects of the mandates in our local area on Wednesday night. The next day, our local farmers markets we've been going to, that we were told we we're going to shut on the 31st of December because they're affected by the mandates and most of them weren't going to get jabbed. There, a letter was sent out of the blue from the health department saying they've decided that they're exempt from the mandates because they're temporary food stores. Now, no one saw that coming. So the markets, all the store owners have been told you don't need to get jabbed. And I, I have no doubt that our clearing and manifestation work that we did for our community had an impact on it. I can't prove it, but there's a lot of coincidences that keep happening over and over again. So just think about your last predominant thoughts and really write some of them down. Like write some of them down, you know? Like, yeah, Christine, intriguing this hologram and the physics. Yeah, there's so much science in, behind it, Christine. Like the yogis and the science are starting to believe more and more. You know, the real science, not the science that um, Fauci comes out with. But, you know, really think about your three predominant thoughts. And all these leaders know is that the only thing they can really do is influence your consciousness, hypnotize you, and brainwash you. And most people let themselves be brainwashed. They just read social media. They listen to everyone around them. I don't listen to most people. I don't take most people seriously. Many of you know, I just, I think most people are... Uh, idiots. I had someone the other day say to me, you know, I think a lot of people are really stupid. I said, I don't think a lot of people. I said, I think the vast majority of people are really stupid, you know. I said, and have no interest in really changing. I said, people are very good at giving the illusion they want to change. They say all the right things, but deep down, they don't really want it. I remember Raymond Grace, he told me, but he said in 40, he, he does a lot of work to help um, women who've been through abuse. I mean, he has a real compassion and passion to help. But he's told me, he goes, there's not a lot of women who over the years, I look back, really changed heavily from my work. He goes, you know, because most of them, they'd start the work and then they didn't really want to continue. He said, but those who did got fantastic results. So he said, the majority though, didn't really want to change when push came to shove. So, you know, write down your three predominant thoughts the last few days. Like, would you prefer, for example, to spend the next three years blaming the government, calling Mark McGowan a clown if that makes you feel better? insulting Daniel Andrews, insulting the Queensland CHO? Or are you brave enough to see them as manifestation reflections of yourself in your collective consciousness of your community and go, yuck, that is one detox I need to do really fast. Because that's what, that's what a manifesto will do. They will go, yuck. And yes, the truth is the collective consciousness does make such a big difference. That isn't easy to overcome. Um, but what you can do is change the way you think and how you see the world. And I remember Yvette Christensen in her book, she just wrote, Lord, don't change others, change me. And these are good words to think about. Has anyone here, um, you know, basically got um, anything? So Sharon, three prominent thoughts the last few days, heart centering, calm and peace. Yep. Interesting. If you're manifesting that in your life, Sharon, great. If you're not, it means you're lying to yourself. Um, anyone else had any predominant thoughts that you know? Like, have you been thinking? Anyone brave enough to go, mm, you're just thinking about vaccines all the time. You're thinking about um, money all the time. You're thinking about your job. You're thinking about your family. Anyone got anyone that? Joe and Tony, you're talking a language? Great. Yeah, no, you guys are great, Joe and Tony. Sharon's starting to manifest, had a major shift. That's awesome. Well, that's good if that's manifesting in your life. Diane, am I going to stay alone while I change my job? That's great. That's really good. It's good that you're aware of it. So, yep. So it's interesting. So different levels of thought, so stress, financial rejection, financially, can I cope? Yeah, this is real. This is good. Money versus I'm always provided for, procrastination, lack of motivation, self-pity. Yeah, now that's being real. Tony, thanks for that. That's really real. 
because I think there was a lot of people like that who, and this is one of the this is one of the things they teach in manifestation, is that most people tend to cope their collective consciousness and don't want to really admit what they're thinking, so they'll come out with really nice flowery words. So it's good when someone's real. Will they get well and be able to work and be financially independent? Yeah. Um, Sheldon, lockdowns don't bother me. Yep, which means you're probably living a fairly relaxed life at the moment, Sheldon, if that's the case. Um, so how am I going to get through this? Selling property and moving up and opening the universe. Worried about my sons, you've had both jabs. Yeah, you know, and interesting thing is, I can say with my boys, whether they get it or not, it's their call. It didn't really bother me, but we taught them our stuff. None of them have any interest in it um, whatsoever. And one of the things is because we just haven't really worried about it because they're sovereign beings as well you know so anyway that just was a little bit of exercise to get you thinking um thanks for participating in that one so let's just look a little bit more at manifestation is it magic or is it scientific so that's the thing so the answer is both so emoto as an example he showed the power of your words and thoughts and frequencies and that, and he found in his work but when you change your thoughts and your words that you speak over water, the water crystals change under a microscope. And words like love, you know, hate, joy, truth, compassion, you can see that under the microscope, the different water crystals and what came up. I mean, how good is that? That's Mozart. That's good music. Um, you know, then you've got, look at, the, look at what happens to the water when you say, you fool, I will kill you heavy metal music, um, water before and after Buddhist prayer, you know. Um, you can see what it can actually do, quality, um, just by that stuff. You know, the water changes by what you actually speak over it. So if water is changing all the time, and considering our body is like about 70% water, and the doctors here would know a lot more accurately, I, I just, I'm just estimating, it's a very high percentage of water, how much are we influencing our body by what we speak? Raymond Gray said most people speak over their body and their body listens and takes actions. They speak ill health over their body. Their body listens and they go and then goes, okay, most people speak over their finances, negativity or speak, I can't avoid the jab. Your body and subconscious system go, oh, okay. And then they make sure you get jabbed. It's really simple. So... Nauman says, I'm right. Okay, great. Yeah, I knew it was something like that, Nauman, but I wasn't sure of the exact. So thanks for, thanks for that, for confirming that. Christine, sobering the high amount of water in the body. So yes, just what you're thinking. Jesus actually says in the Bible that everyone will be accountable on judgment day for every single one of your thoughts. You know, at your life review, everything you've thought, you've lived, you've got to have to go through and deal with when you cross over. So the science behind manifestation shows that the universe is one big giant hologram. And I've listed a number of scientists who've all confirmed, the most recent being um, Amit Goswani and Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, Gos, I, don't, I don't think you know he's a scientist or not, but he teaches a lot on stuff. Amit Goswani, a brilliant physicist, wrote a PhD thesis. I tried to read his book, um, and the doctors here will be very proud of me. I actually managed to understand quite a lot of it, but just not all of it. Um, David Bohm, Niels Bohr, Carl Pribman, Max Flank are some of the absolute famous geniuses of the, of, the, of the science. And they have all confirmed that we're living in a quantum esoteric realm where consciousness is the ultimate creator. So it's not the material world that we focus on, it's the consciousness which creates the material world. That's basically what quantum is. So physicists realize that holographic science and quantum physics could explain many mysteries that otherwise conventional classical science couldn't explain. So I've given some examples here, how suddenly one arm has the second arm working better, you know, cutting out parts of the brain and the functions reappear in other parts. Schrodinger's cat was a very good experiment about that kind of stuff. I won't explain that because it's really hard to and takes too long. Many great yogis also talked about the esoteric or spiritual realm and fifth dimension. And now we can access it to manifest the shift in our life situation. So Jesus Christ, Buddha, Dalai Lama, Yogananda, Sri Yukechwa and the Kriya Yogi. Uh, my father's psychotherapist, Bill McRae, an absolute genius. I mean, I'm still so annoyed. I used to own his four books and I've lost them. And they're not in print, but some of the great teachings on this sort of stuff, you know, on spiritual stuff. And 
all of them teach this stuff. Bill McRae was well known for his, um, in, in WA among a small group. He would say, you bring me any child under the age of 12 with any sickness, give me the mother for three months and I'll cure the sickness. He said with almost any sickness, he said asthma especially. He had 100% success rate in curing asthma by simply working with the child's mother to cure their consciousness because he said the child is just carrying the mother's consciousness until age 12. So by clearing the child's by the mother's consciousness, the child, the child would heal. He had similar success with autism, all kinds of stuff, because he knew that by shifting the consciousness, he could shift the energy around it, and that would in turn shift it for the child. William had chronic, um, had a, was started getting asthma over a few days, and I remembered all this. So I remember working with Grace when, when, when he was three, and I got her to come with me and work on shifting Grace's consciousness around William. And literally the next morning we woke up and William was fine. It didn't have it anymore. So the good news is all the science now agree with these yogis. And they're all starting to realize there's an absolute common thread behind this. And this is part of what's interesting. While the world is waking up in this quantum science, we've got this opposite duality happening of these absolute pseudo scientific nuts that are coming out giving ridiculous, very old antiquated obsolete science around jabs which once upon a time in humanity's history had their role in its evolution and it did you know one stage vaccines did have a role in helping humanity when they were in a very low state of evolution to get some better results to their health but we've we've just evolved way beyond that now so now we're in this interesting shift of do we evolve or do we choose to stay like 100 years 100 years in the dark age so carl prebham for example He's, he looked at holographic film and found that every small fragment of it contains all the information recorded in the whole. So science, psychotherapy, psychology, yogis are all agreeing massively. So consciousness precedes matter, according to Prebham. And he said that if, if holographic was true, coffee cups, trees, table lamps might not exist or even exist in the way we believe them to exist. So more and more, they're saying this, that everything we see only exists because we have created it in our mind and we believe it exists. That's it. So I, I, I know in the last two years, we saw a massive shift in our state in WA in making things work a little bit better because the funny thing was, I, I said right in the beginning, the best thing WA could do is shut its borders and let no one in or out until we sort this shit out. And I was convinced of that. And I used to create that as a manifestation. And as many would know, WA had the borders locked pretty much for two years. I mean, the laughing stock of some of the East Coast. But I, 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 I always laugh because I said that was my, one of my earliest statements and I never changed my opinion. I said the best thing we could do is lock our borders and no one really gets in or out until this whole nonsense stops. So consciousness precedes matter. And Paul Peach of Uni, Uni, Indiana University was an example of a scientist who just thought of the whole lot of bunk. So he did this experiment where he got salamanders and he removed their brain and put it back in afterwards because his theory was if a salamander's feeding behavior was localized in the brain, the position of the brain and the head was critical. Didn't matter where it was positioned, this would prove the holographic theory. So what they found was the fish would go into a stupor, but once the brain was put back, the behavior would return to normal. He even put the brain upside down and two fed normally. He had 700 operations by each one the same result Peach became an ardent supporter of holographic. What's interesting is as um, Peach concluded that a lot of brain supposed trauma and injuries were simply because of what doctors were speaking over to people while they were in a traumatic, traumatized state. And Michael Moshevitz and Norman Doidge in their books, Brain, brain Science um, or Brain Healing, they talk about this and how a lot of brain supposedly trauma happens because of what's spoken over people. Um, people who most people's health is what's spoken over them. Kids who supposedly have autism, it's what's spoken over them. Um, in many, in many times, there was a situation in school where what was actually happened was they got they did this experiment, which was awful, but they did this. But um, they got a group of very smart kids and a group of very you know dumb kids, and they put them in different classes. And the smart kids, they got a teacher to teach them as if they were dumb, and got a, a smart a, a, and, then, and told this smart, this teacher that they were a group of slow learners. And then they got another teacher and told them with the slow learner kids, they were a bunch of highly intelligent kids and they needed higher level development. What they found in the next three months was the slower learner kids became a lot more intelligent 
and the more intelligent people slowed down in their learning. So they found that what you speak over and what you get people to believe about themselves is absolutely everything. You know, so it really is. It's just um, what you speak over yourself, what you speak over people around you. I'm so careful what I speak over people around me, over anyone in my close team, over my clients, because what I speak over them, by the word of what's called a telephysics, um, I know that I will create back that reaction from them. So I'm very cautious what I speak over clients and I speak over people. Very cautious of what I speak over someone I'm dating or and things like that. And certainly what they speak over me because I know that what they speak over me, I can start to impact if I let that seep into my consciousness. So the thing is in science, they've also found that particles and waves can change form. Television's an example. Television's a series of lights of electromagnetic uh, energy and lights hitting a TV and, and we see a visual image. Manifestation's no different. We have a series of electromagnetic thoughts sweeping out of our mind and then we create the physical reality in front of us. Now, if we all knew that and we see what's going on around us and if your life right now is a shit show, the only person that you've got to basically call to account is you. Um, look right in the mirror and go, yikes. I must be creating a real shit of a hologram here. And the other thing I'll mention too, is that especially when you live with someone, like they're your partner, intimate partner, you can't help but take on their consciousness. So if you don't like what the, the way they are in their consciousness, you've got a bit of an issue. You're going to have to deal with it. And But in saying that, start first with you and shifting it in you. And inevitably, either it will shift in them or they'll move out of your life. That's how this work actually moves. So Jesus was able to turn water into wine because he could see that he didn't see the water anymore as water. He was able to change its form, his holographic thinking, and command it to become wine. So the only time quanta ever manifests particles is when we're looking at them and we're believing that they're there in that form. So nothing exists until we focus upon them. So, yeah, Nauman says the way particle duality of all matter is a key principle to understand the heal. Yeah, exactly. You sound like a pretty switched on doctor, Nauman. Um, so, yeah, so basically with electromagnetic frequency and with thoughts and with, with doing all that kind of stuff, and there's so much frequency machines and medicine coming out now, it's getting extraordinary results for people. You know, it's just, there's a constantly growing field. So to summarize, for example, wholeness classical theory taught that the state of a system as a whole was merely the result of the interaction of its component parts. Quantum theory argues the opposite. It claims the behavior of the parts is organized by the whole. So subatomic parts are not independent things, are part of an invisible whole, and wholeness is the primary reality. So conclusion is although our everyday lives are specific location at level of quantum potential, location does not exist. All points in space are equal to other points. So Michael Talbot in the Holographic Universe, which is a really good book for beginners in this area, he writes this great book. He concludes, we create our reality, placebo is real, a faith or consciousness teacher can help you experience a miracle. We have the full power to alter our reality by our thoughts and how we perceive things. And he gave a couple of extraordinary examples about how in the Oxford Medical Journal, they told this curious story of a man who got a brain tumor went to a doctor, the doctor gave him a drug which was believed to cure brain tumors. It was in the first stage of testing. The man went away and he was cured. And six weeks later, he read in another medical journal that the, um, that the, brain, that the drug had failed his first round of testing and his brain tumor came back. So he went to the doctor. The doctor knew straight away it was a wise doctor who's very quantum focused. So the doctor actually um, knew what was going on and he got a, a syringe of water and he said to the patient, actually, I've got some good news for you. Yes, the first round failed, but the second round is looking more promising. So he then injected the, the patient with a, with a syringe of water and told him that this was a round two of the same drug and the guy's brain tumor went away. Classic, perfect placebo effect. But about two months later, the guy had been read in the journal and they and, and read that they'd got rid of the, they discontinued all testing of the drug. He realized the doctor had lied to him, got really upset at his doctor, and he got his brain tumor back and he died, all by his own manifestation belief system. So, very interesting. And another group who mentally practiced piano in a simulated exercise for 30 minutes a day, compared to another group who did 30 minutes a day physically, they found the results were identical. 
The ones who physically practice got 24% improvement in 30 days. The ones who mentally practice got 23% improvement. It was well known that both Nikola Tesla and Albert Einstein, usually when they made their inventions, got it right the first or second time because they spent their whole time creating it in their head, tinkering with it, improving it. And then by the time they physically created it, it was by and large already in their head. So some conclusions from science. Traditional physics is no longer relevant. Quantum is more real. All things are interconnected. We're one with all things. Time is not in a straight line, but we're in the now. In other words, it's linear space and time just do not exist. Um, right, this past, present and future is only an illusion we believe in. It's interesting, like right now, for example, I'm learning more and more to live in the now. I'm naturally analytical and used to go into the past and future. But now I don't really think much about it. I consider the future, but I also know we can change our future. We also know that we can do that by changing our perception or certainly change how the future affects us because time and consciousness and realities are a constant ongoing creation. In remote viewing, they teach that life is a series of ongoing probable futures that lie ahead of us. Um, there's a movie called The Adjustment Bureau. I don't know if anyone's seen that, but the whole thing was about these alternate probable futures that are before us all the time that we can choose any day which one we go. We could go the same path as Atlantis, or we could not go the same path as Atlantis, depending on choices, depending on things that happen. But then in the midst of all that, I do also believe some things are predetermined. In other words, all the probable futures do point one way. So this is how you can do timeline therapy and regression therapy and go back and heal things because you realize by integrating the past timeline into the now. Things, objects aren't localized, but are spread as one big hologram and nothing exists until observed. So that's the, the conclusions. So that's a good summary of what we've got there. So now science is correct. You can do all the right things, have the right structures, the best advisors, done amazing due diligence on the investment, got a perfect winning trading system or business model, everything right. And I've seen this happen over and over again with clients. I've seen clients come in and see me and they can't get it wrong. My business partner, I said to her, you must have a really good hologram around money with cryptos because literally she just always sells at the top of the market and, and, and buys when it happens to be at its bottom. She's got this extraordinary ability to do that. So I said, your hologram must be really good because I don't get it that accurate. The thing is, yet, if you're, you know, basically the law of attraction and frequency is like gravity or radio waves. It's not moral. It's not emotional. It doesn't give a shit what's fair or unfair, what should happen. It's universal law. It's basic science. So Matt, this is all science. So if your life is a shit show, or if you've got something in your life you don't like going on, unfortunately, you're arguing with real science. You are creating your hologram every day, every moment, every hour, every minute, every second, by what you're thinking, by what you're saying, by what you're speaking, by, and most importantly, as Neville Goddard says, by what you're feeling. You can walk around saying all the right things. I am at peace. I'm feeling good. But if in your feeling, you're agitated and you're worked up, it means nothing. You can walk around talking about, you know, all kinds of stuff. That is why absolute assholes become rich. Really good people go broke. Absolute assholes can live a long life. Really kind, giving, loving people often die young with a horrible cancer because the difference is one group is following the law, one is not. My father worked a lot of this out. He, he's very interesting. You know, he lived for many, many years. He's 85 now, 86. And in fact, he was in brilliant health and looked perfect until four years ago. And the only thing that changed was when he um, left his work, he just ha hasn't been as happy since. But he used to say this to me. He'd say, Joe Jelke Peterson was the most arrogant guy and he just keeps living on. Donald Trump, you look at him, Trump just speaks his mind. Absolute assholes. And I've noticed this. My dad had this theory and my dad has, has an amazing knowledge of quantum science and psychotherapy because he was the one who introduced me to a lot of this. And he, um, yeah, he actually told this to me. He said his theory on cancer patients, and he said so far, every all 100% of people who's ever seen it had them are always very similar. They're very nice people, people would describe them as, 
who generally don't like to say things to upset people, so they hold things in. That's his theory. So in other words, he says they end up manifesting all that negative energy into themselves. So, and, it's, and I remember saying it's such a simple way of looking at it, but I think you're probably correct. I mean, Louise has something very similar. So keep in mind that it's not about how nice you are, how good you are. I said I've met some absolutely ruthless, vicious people who just make wealth as if as, like day in, day out because they follow the laws of money. I meet people in magnificent health who are absolute dicks because they follow the laws of health in the way they're thinking. And yeah, as Nauman says, they speak their mind and live their truth. So they live in good health and good finances. Most people are living a ridiculous lie every day and speaking all kinds of shit. Um, so you can energize and shift yourself in all areas. Reprogram your subconscious mind and energy body. Whether investment, health, tax, regulatory, government, or otherwise, see immediate tangible results in your life. So all this stuff. I notice that people who seem to have bad experiences with their money, they, I know with myself, I did everything right. I mean, I was an accountant, lawyer, financial planner, and I, I got scammed two or three times. I had all kinds of things go wrong with my money. And I eventually realized the whole problem was in my thinking. And once I changed that, it all stopped happening. And I noticed that with clients. I have clients come and see me who have an amazing mindset. Their structures are a mess, and yet nothing's gone wrong for them. I meet clients who've done everything right, and they've got this person suing them, they've got this government agency after them. So it all comes after that. Um, a very interesting book by Dr. John Sarno, medical doctor, who wrote a, a book challenging his own profession about back pain and neck pain. And he concludes that something like 98% of his patients, he worked out, he cured their back pain no matter what it was by simply changing their mind-body relationship. And his basic premise is the back is a strong, strong structural um, part of your body. There's no reason that your back should have problems. He says there's no reason you can't sit in the chair for six hours a day and have problems because your back is made for that kind of stuff. He said the only reason it's, it's got a problem is because of what you believe, what people say over you. And he would have lawyers come in to see him who had major back problems, a truck driver, the truck driver said, yeah, look, I know it's because I drive 12 hours a day. And he goes, ah, oh, nonsense. He goes, you're a big, well-built guy. He goes, your back can handle it. He said, just do a bit of stretching and exercise afterwards. He said, stop believing that, that stuff. And he said, there's a bigger reason. What's really worrying you in your life? And there would always be a deeper issue that was worrying them and manifesting in their back. And he said, generally within six to eight weeks, he cured all back pain of all of his patients. The only ones who he didn't succeed with he said had really big psychological problems they didn't want to deal with. So these are very good books as well in this area of manifestation, you know? So feeling is a secret. So everything, when your tax you pay, when you get audited, experiences with money that are negative, failures in investments, fines from the government, COVID fines, speeding fines, all of that is a manifestation of your hologram. So always work on fixing the inside world and realize that changes with you, that's when real magic and transformation begins to happen. So when you really, really shift the inside world, that's when you see it happen, you know? So when, when you do that. So clearing the internal blockages within you is so powerful. And stop trying to fight and fix the outside world. It's why I don't really go to a lot of things and get myself and go and, and argue. I work on shifting myself and then things start fixing in the outside world. Um, around. Finally, to finish off, I'm gonna just share with you a seven step protocol that I use for manifestation. Um, the I was taught by a master. And you know, you can find your own way, but this gives you a, at least a little bit of an idea of how the manifestation protocol works. So the first one is create a clear intention. So, uh, and, and not in the negative. So something like, not like I don't want to get sick or I don't want to get the jab. Something like, in my case, was just pretty much my intention. Well, whatever, whatever the rest of the world wants to get up to is their business. It's not my job to change God's business, to change Perth's business, to change Australia's business. But whatever the rest of the world is doing, I'm living a prosperous life. I'm, I'm living life as normal. I plan to travel when I feel like it, which I don't right now. And I'll be doing it with absolutely no, and I'll be doing it absolutely on my own terms. That's been my intention. And, and things like as well, that my business would go on regardless and nothing would change. And the only reason that it would change 
is because it no longer serves me and it's time to get rid of it. And, my, and I was not seeing the truth. So I create an intention and you manifest it. Next thing is to be in the right brain state. So your brain state is really important because generally there's a few, Raymond Grace teaches a lot about this um, thing about your brain and how and what kind of state your brain should actually be in. So to give you a little bit of an idea, for example, when it comes down to your brain um, and things like that, your, there's about five different levels that your brain can go into. Now, most people live in this state, which is actually called the beta state. So that's what most people are in, what's called the beta state of brain. So in the beta state of brain, this is what's called your monkey mind. It's the mind that just kind of goes, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it goes really, really fast. And it just keeps basically talking or whatever else. So that's, that's what's called the monkey mind. You know, that's the one that tends to go a little bit, um, you know, fast or whatever else. And yeah, so basically just keeps... So it's basically your day to day. And generally from age 13, you are constantly in this monkey mind where your mind is just going super fast um, pretty much most of the time. And you're thinking a lot. Now, it's impossible to manifest when you're actually in that beta mind. So in that particular situation, it's just not possible. What tends to happen is that you, um, your mind, you're, you're so busy. So when people are walking around in a monkey mind, saying I'm prosperous, I'm this, or I'm that, or this is happening with me, and trying to speak all kinds of stuff over their life, um, none of it actually works when you're um, basically when you're in that monkey mind. So it's really important to learn to change your mind, transform your thinking, and get your mind into one of the lower brain states where you actually are able to move yourself into what's called an alpha state or a theta state. Because in the alpha state or the theta state, you are in a lot, you are in a lot more deeper state, so to speak. So to give you a little bit of an idea of the brain state, um, let me just um for some reason my slides have disappeared on the brain state, so I'm just trying to find them. Yeah, these aren't quite in the same format, but um, I'll just put these up. Um, so yeah, these are the, um, the brain states. So this gives you a bit of an idea. So when you measure them on a brain neurofeedback machine. So when you're between eight to 14 hertz, you're in a daydreaming state, like watching TV. This is why when you're on social media, scrolling through it aimlessly, you're in an alpha state. And that means you're getting programmed. As soon as you move into alpha, you become programmable. If you can move into a theta state, then your programming is even more powerful. That's why when someone's heavily traumatized, they often move into a theta state, which means that you are vulnerable for any kind of programming that hits you. So kids between the ages of three and six, for example, are in a theta state most of the time. And kids between seven and 12 are in an alpha state. That's why if you've got a child six and under, be very careful what you speak over them because that will influence them and they will live that. Likewise, remember what was spoken over you from zero to six, and that will tell you a lot about your life today, or seven to 12. So we're generally learning by meditating, by breathing, you can move yourself into a much deeper state um, of consciousness and allow yourself. So that's the other thing of manifestation. We normally do some breathing or something just to move you into a deeper state of consciousness. The third part of manifestation is what's called command. So you command the manifestation that you would like to take place. So you can't just say, I would like this to happen. You command it. So once I've got it, I command this is going to happen. I did a command on Wednesday night. I command that these things clear by the laws of the golden liquid realms, the chemical powers, that it will clear or block it, that it will, you know, that this will come into pass in West Australia. I did a command that all, you know, mandates would be cleared in terms of, how it's affecting me. What I had a sense of, well, I couldn't clear them for the state, but I could clear them for myself and those who are part of our group. And the next day we got that markets announcement. Um, clear blockages. If you've got any blockages, you can tune in. It can be a lack of faith or negative energy. We also will do a clearing. So of that, and that's a whole protocol in itself. You then have to do some physical action to manifest it. So especially if you're doing a manifestation around health, 
then you want to go and take some action, whether it's to go and see a doctor or go and see a naturopath or do some kind of practical action. If it's financial, go, you might sign up for a course or go and invest in something or something like that. Once you've done all that, you let go and let God. You don't force it. You just let go and forget about it and move on with life. And then when you least expect it, it comes. If you try and force it, it just runs away from you. And watch for some clues or some signs. That's the final point. Um, you'll see the little clues or signs and little intuitive things guiding you. And you just follow those instincts and you get that. So in summary, you know, you go through these kind of stuff, manifest and keep yourself calm, centered away from the drama, plan ahead and adapt quickly, enjoy and savor the good times, take plenty of practical action, um, go ahead and really watch your thoughts and what you're thinking. Okay, so are there any questions now or comments before we hand, I hand back to Steve? And how did you enjoy that, everyone? Did you get some value from that presentation? Hopefully so. Thank you, Samus. I love speaking of manifestation because every time I do that, I'm like, yeah, I can feel people shifting their perspective and that gets me excited because that gives me hope. Faye, clearing blockages to the manifestation. Yeah, but just the manifestation, if you're aware of anything, if there's a protocol, which one does, Faye? Faye loves it. Yeah, Christine, interesting how you can clearly affect the mandate on yourself and the team. Yeah, I was, we're told very clearly, Christine, you can do that. So. Yep, Fiona, more hope. Mark, thank you. Sheldon, great. Yep, absolutely. We'll turn your destiny. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Judith. Thank you, Belinda. Faye, how do you access the protocol? Yeah, that's a training that we do. In fact, if anyone would be interested in me doing a training on manifestation, you know, I do run a three-month program, you know, paid program, which people can be taken through and taught, and you'll walk away. And every time we run it, people walk away manifesting more money, more health, more freedom. Um, I, I can do something, I can organize something after Christmas. So I might do a free webinar to explain what we do. And then, yeah, just show people our programs because we've got a, a paid one. But yeah, um, stay tuned, Faye and Simon. Everyone will send out an email over next week about it. So uh, about manifestation and remote viewing programs. So yeah, look, one of my favorite to, to teach. Okay, on that note, Grace and Steve, you guys can take it back and uh, organize for the next speaker.